while working on a different problem, I got, th got to thinking about uh, how many languages have ever been spoken? What's the total diversity of human languages and proto-languages? And I couldn't find any good answer anywhere. So I tried to do a simple calculation. I thought I would share it here. Because uh, when you think about it, it's pretty obvious there must have been lots and lots of languages. This conference is called Ways to Proto-Language for some reason. Should have been Ways to Proto-Languages. Using a singular, uh, that makes us forget that there was diversity also in prehistory. Multitude of languages is not something new. We have no date on the languages in the distant past, but we can say something about their numbers at least. So today we know there are something like 7,000 living languages, give or take a thousand, depends on your definition. Last month there were 7,002 language, languages are disappearing fast. But how many have there been in total since the dawn of language? To calculate that, I break down the problem into three separable questions. To begin with, when was the dawn of language? How long is the total time period we're talking about? And second, at any given point in time, how many different languages were spoken, like the 7,000 today? And third, what is the turnover rate? How often is an does a new language replace an old one? If you can, can have estimates for those three numbers, you can calculate the total. On the dawn of language, lots of different opinions about that. I'm sure we will hear a few at this conference. My answer is about 1.5 million years ago in Homo erectus. That's when the first proto-languages were spoken doesn't have to be full modern language, probably wasn't, but something I would call language at least. And how I arrived at that number is a long story, which I won't repeat here. It's the main topic of my book, The Dawn of Language, that came out last week in English translation. I would like to draw the attention to the genetic data that Andir et al presented here about an hour ago where there were, well, the genetic changes leading up to Homo sapiens, they were distributed in time in two different peaks. One peak recently when Homo sapiens became a separate species and one peak, well, spread out around a million years ago or more. And I would like to place the genetic adaptations to proto-language in that earlier peak. And the number of languages again at any given time, 7,000 today, but today is a highly atypical period in history. Most of world history doesn't look like the globalized society of today. 99% of human history was pre-agriculture. 80% of human history was pre-sapiens. About 60% of it was Homo erectus. About 50% of human history was covered in ice at or general harsh climates at most uh, latitudes. And that's, that will make for very different diversity numbers than today. And we can start that by looking at how many speakers do we have per language on average? The average today is about a million speakers per language, but that's still very atypical. The average is affected by a, a number of huge languages. Median number of speakers even today is just 5,000. So the typical language is much smaller than you might think. And if we look at hunter-gatherers, the best known case is probably Australia before the arrival of Europeans. Population, difficult to estimate exactly, but 
not more than a million. Number of known languages, 300 odd. Number of unknown languages, nobody knows, but uh, probably quite a few that went extinct before somebody recorded them. So the number of speakers is not more than a few thousand. And beyond that, the population of Australia increased before European colonization from genetic data. So the typical prehistoric numbers is even less. And if you look at North America, where we also have some information, we get similar numbers as Australia. So uh, best guesstimate for the average number of speakers per language over human history, let's say a thousand speakers per language, that will put us in the right ballpark. Much more is not consistent with known population figures, much less you don't get a viable language. So let's use a thousand as a rough number. And world population. There I would like to split up history in three distinct periods. First, the period before Homo sapiens hordes went out of Africa and descended on the rest of the world. There were several kinds of people around. Sapiens and Neanderthals and Denisovans and Hobbits and what have it. There were also glaciations from time to time. People lived in sparse populations of small groups. World population at the time, very difficult to estimate, but small. Most estimates I can find are more than 1 million. Population genetic estimates give even lower numbers. But those estimates are strongly affected by bottlenecks and also affected by the population being split up in several species who are interbreeding, but not, not all the time. So the average census population is probably larger than the effective population genetic number. And we're talking small isolated groups. So a very modest number of speakers per language, probably even less than a thousand. Second period, before agriculture, but after Homo sapiens spread out, we're talking about a substantial increase in population at that time. Homo sapiens had denser populations than Neanderthals used to have, and also a pretty much doubled area settled both new continents with Australia and the Americas and Homo sapiens went up into higher latitudes than the other people did. So uh, world population and yeah, in the several million range, maybe 10 million. And then post agriculture, people figured out how to grow their own food. And the rest is history, exponential population increase. And many early agricultural adopters flooding the world with people, flooding the world with their languages. And that's how we got the million speaker languages of today. And then we come to a language turnover rate or the lifespan of a language, if you want. How long before a language isn't understandable by anybody anymore? There are four processes that will replace a language or end the life of a language. Because in the first one, there's no replacement. If a group speaking a language goes extinct, then the language goes away too. And then there's language replacement, where a group adopts somebody else's language and stops speaking their original language. And then there's language split. When we have a group speaking one language, the group splits in two and the languages diverge eventually. So we get, so we get two new languages replacing the old one. And then there is normal gradual language change over time, the topic of historical linguistics. 
Languages change all the time, and eventually they are unintelligible to the original speakers. And at that point, we should call it a new language. We should, we should call the old one gone. So group extinction, common in recent times. There's been enough genocide going around. Probably also common when the world went into ice ages, natural causes, killing off a lot of groups. Very hard to estimate the prehistoric average rate of group extinction. So let's leave that open for a moment. Language replacement, very common today. Lots and lots of minority people adopting the majority language for a variety of reasons. Not unknown among hunter-gatherers, Happened quite a lot when the Pamanyunga languages spread across Australia. Their languages spread more than their genes spread. So some people must have adopted the languages. But probably rare enough in distant prehistory that it can be neglected. Language split. Doesn't happen much today, but uh, historically common. Historical little normal explanation for the buildup of language diversity. We can observe it in a few cases, like the Romance languages. Must have been very common when a group of humans in territory. Like when the small group of original Native Americans, when they crossed the glaciers into Canada and, and so on, they filled two continents in basically no time flat. And they went from whatever small number of languages they brought with them to the current several thousand Native American languages. There must have been a lot of splits along the way and very rapid splits since they're so far back in history that we cannot reconstruct them linguistically. And then there's normal language change over time. That happens all the time and we can follow languages, written languages we can follow through old written sources and see how they change. So if we have a family tree, picked proto in the, in the European family, because it's the most familiar to most of us. And the present diversity that's given by the number of tips in the tree. Should have been a few hundred tips, but whoever drew this diagram stopped at about 60. But the tips are just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more diversity than that in the tree, if we look across history. Here I have marked all the language splits with the little red lines. And that adds a whole bunch of languages, Proto-Germanic and, and Proto-Italic and Proto-whatever. And the total, is much larger than, than the number of tips. And the interesting thing here is the turnover rate because the number of tips, number of splits, if you go from Proto-Indo-European into Germanic, into North Germanic, into Old Norse, into Norwegian, there are four splits along the way. And that, that means there's four different languages at least along that lineage. Proto-Indo-European, Proto-Germanic, Proto-North Germanic, Old Norse and Norwegian, which are generally not mutually comprehensible. Of course, it's a dialect continuum along a language, but even so, even though I'm a native speaker of a tip there, I cannot understand North, Old North Germanic or even Old Norse without help. And the time is between splits, the time since Proto-Indo-European is something like 6,000 years. So four splits since then works out to 1,000 to 2,000 years between splits. So that's the turnover rate along a splitting lineage. But some lineages don't split, like Armenian, the blue line here. It looks like Armenian is the same language across 5,000 years, but it isn't. 
there was a proto-Armenian once upon a time, and there was an old Armenian and a middle Armenian and so on. Those are not mutually intelligible just like that. They have changed quite a bit as well, even though we don't have written sources for all of Armenian history. So there will be several languages along that line. line. Of course, how many is a matter of definition, but it will still be a dialect continuum that you have to split up somewhere. And if we look at English, where we have better data and data that I understand better, we can look at Shakespeare, 1599, oh, I die, Horatio, and so on. That's still English. We can understand it, even if the spelling is a bit odd. If you go to Chaucer around 1382, for this was on St. Valentine's Day, when, ev when every bread come if there to... Okay, I gave up there somewhere. So uh, that's, well, recognizable as sort of English. And uh, I believe a native English speaker can figure out most of it, but I'm not sure about all the words. And if you go to Beowulf, written uh, a bit more than a thousand years ago, what? Where Gardena in Giardagum Theod. No, I don't think my old English pronunciation is up to par, but you see the point. Uh, that's very difficult to understand. And if you haven't actually studied ancient English sources, you probably don't understand it. So in a thousand years, the ancestor of English wasn't English, wasn't the same language as modern English. And if you look at other language lines of descent, look at the Scandinavian languages, I can understand back to about 1300, but not further. And the Romance languages, similarly, they have changed from Latin. So a thousand years or so is enough to change a language into a new language. Good old language change. So if we put together the language, the turnover rate. Group extinction difficult to estimate, so let's assume it's small. Low rate. Language replacement, likewise, assume a very low rate. Language split. In well-known cases, it's about every thousand or two thousand years or so. That means the turnover rate somewhere between 0 0.0005 to point. 001 per year. Normal language change, also a thousand years or so. But there we have the factor that the, all the languages where we can measure the rate of change, those are languages with old written history. And the written history will likely conserve the language because you have the old writings as a reference. And uh, the little data we have on unwritten languages indicate that they probably change faster. So a thousand years turnover, turnover time is a fairly conservative estimate of historical rates of change. So perhaps a bit more than 0 0.001 turnover rate per year. And if we sum these numbers from language split a bit less than 0 0.001 per year, from turnover rate a bit more than 0 0.001 per year, plus a bit from group extinction, we get, get a number approaching 0 0.002 turnover rate per year. Then, of course, it's a good question whether we can assume the same rate even in uh, prehistoric Homo sapiens, much less in other species of humans. But for the sake of this simple calculation, let's assume we can. Let's assume the turnover rate has been constant since the time of Homo erectus. 
we have no data one way or the other. Then in order to calculate the grand total number of languages, The languages at any one point in time is the population at that time divided by the typical language size. And the replacement period, that's the inverse of the turnover rate, the time period it takes to replace the current set of languages with a new set. And the total number of language replacements is the total duration we're talking about divided by the replacement period. And putting all that together, the grand total is languages at one point in time times the number of replacements. And that, that becomes the population divided by language size times the duration times the turnover rate. And if we calculate that for the three time periods we had, we get first pre out of Africa with about uh, a thousand concurrent languages multiplied together a thousand languages times 1.4 million years times the turnover rate becomes 2.8 million different proto languages. Pre agriculture, but post out of Africa, that's about 40,000 years. Let's assume 5 million population. And let's assume that language size is about a thousand people, thousand speakers. And then the total becomes 5 million divided by 1,000 times 40,000 years times the turnover rate. Works out as 400,000 languages. Languages this time, not proto-languages. And post-agriculture, then the population increases hugely. So difficult to put numbers. Population goes from 10 million or so to 7,000 million today. Language size increases in step. And the best guess is that the number of languages stays roughly the same, probably at a big bit higher diversity than today because peak diversity in recent history was quite a bit higher than now. So we can assume 10,000 languages because most of the population growth was within groups groups growing to larger size rather than uh, groups multiplying to more groups and more languages. And the rates of extinction and replacement went up as well as people started moving around and started replacing each other. Well, let's neglect that. And then we get uh, 10,000 or so languages times 10,000 years times the turnover rate works out to 200,000 languages since the dawn of agriculture. Of course, you notice the many numbers in these calculations are basically just educated guesses. But I still wanted to put numbers in to get some kind of feeling for what's the order of magnitude here. To get a feeling for the actual diversity of language historically. Most of the numbers can be off. Some can be off by a factor of two. Some can, some can be off by a factor of 10. But even so, it's better to have some kind of numbers, even though they are not solid. An important point is that I would argue that this is the way forward to calculate historic diversity before the times when we can actually measure it. We can still estimate it. And then you can refine the numbers and put in better numbers and probably divide history into more time periods and get better population numbers for each period and so on. But you have to start somewhere. And there we have the bottom line. 3.4 million different languages ever spoken, plus minus a lot. At least half of them were proto languages, not full modern languages. But 75% of them were not spoken by Homo sapiens. 95% or more were spoken by hunter gatherers. 99.9% .9 were never written. 99.8% are extinct and lost forever. 
So we had a huge diversity of languages that is not available anymore. And that's really too bad. Thank you.